Hey everybody, it's Andrew Butler, or Amigo Sniped, here from Proven Gamer, and we're here with Ian, the lead designer on Loadout from Edge of Reality. How are you doing today? Doing very well, man. How's the show been so far? We're on the second day, and we're just getting started. Yeah, well, on the second day for everyone attending the show, but for me it's been four days, and I'm short on sleep, but otherwise very enthused to see everyone playing the game. So you're a local uh, based Austin company. Uh, when did they approach you to join the show? So I've been working in Edge since 2004. Uh, they have an internship program, which is really cool for them, us I should say. And uh, I started out as an intern, just you know, getting people dinner and worked my way up. Here I'm the lead designer now. So you're here at RTX. Is there any reason y'all wanted to come here specifically? Yeah, well, we're in town. Uh, RTX, I think, kind of comes from Halo. It and does. so that means that we're going to have a pretty good shooter fan base here. So it seemed like a no-brainer for us. Yeah, one of the things I know that, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but one of the great things about RTX is there's a lot of other Austin and Texas-based companies, which I think is really great. And y'all are doing a great job showing off your product here. Uh, the loadout, for people who haven't heard of it, it's a PC shooter. It's going. One of the major features of it is you're going to be able to customize two guns later on. But right now, it's just one at the show. And you can do it from anywhere. Uh, when going into approaching this new IP, what was your uh, guy's main goal for the game? Sure. So I'll actually tell you a little bit about the history of the game, because that would probably paint a little bit clearer of a picture. So we started out uh, thinking, well, you know, I think it's about time we start making our own games, games that we'd like to play. So we put together a small prototype team. We tried out a whole bunch of different game concepts. And uh, we ended up on a third-person shooter that featured, like, fast-paced shooting Mm -hmm. and a bit more of a platforming component than most other shooters you see today. And then after that, we were like, all right, well, this is a really solid shooter. We need to add a little bit more depth and player progression to the game. And so we tried out more concepts, and we landed on weapon crafting. Weapon crafting turned out to be a big success for us, and so we decided to just take on customization in general. And so the game is called Loadout, because virtually anything in your loadout you can customize. So going into the release of this game, which y'all don't have a release date yet, do y'all? Uh, we don't have a formal release date because much like other free-to-play online titles, we're just mm -hmm. going to release the game in stages. Yeah. Uh, the first stage is going to be our closed beta stage, which will probably happen in the next two weeks. So with the loadouts, uh, right now we there's different kinds of guns. You have like rocket launchers, snipers, basic machine gun kind of things. Uh, what when uh, going into picking that, what what did y'all? Uh, decide like what was the process for that sure so to explain weapon crafting a little bit better for everyone that hasn't gotten to play the game yet we don't have like pre-made uh, shotgun or sniper rifle or anything all of the weapons in our game are made by a series of interchangeable parts that can be mixed and matched so you can make a, a gun that fires like a sniper rifle but then you can add all these modifications to it mm -hmm. so let's take a basic rocket launcher obviously you can make that in our game but then you can attach a different payload to it, so then your rocket launcher shoots out fire instead of regular damage. Yeah. And then you can attach a guided scope to it, so now suddenly you can steer that rocket wherever you want. Then you can make it a sticky rocket, so that you can then stick it to a target. Yeah. Then you can attach a manual detonator to it, so that you can control it manually and use it to plant a mine that you detonate manually. So the possibilities, I don't want to say, are endless, but there's a lot of variety in our game. So how we got there was by taking a look at all the guns out there in other games, figuring out a system that could produce all of those, and then seeing where else we could make a lot of variety in addition to all of the guns that you can make in other games. So since y'all are using a free-to-play model, obviously the game will be free-to-play. How are y'all going to be supporting uh, yourself as a company within the game? Sure. So you will be able to buy weapon parts. The game is definitely not going to be a pay-to-win game. That's probably the most concerning thing that everyone hears when mm -hmm. they hear that you can buy weapon parts. We have a rule in the design team. Anything that gives you a competitive advantage in the game, you can earn without spending a dime. We actually go even a step further than that by saying that there are weapon parts that give you a competitive advantage that you can't even buy. You have to earn them. Uh, in addition to weapon parts, you will be able to buy uh, character skins. You'll be able to buy different characters. You'll be able to buy paints for your gun. So again, just a ton of customization. We really want to focus on players being able to personalize the experience. When designing all free to play model, did y'all look at other games like League of Legends or Team Fortress 2? To, uh... Actually, those were our two big ones. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's really good to hear. Uh, pay to win's a uh, disappointing thing yeah. in some games. Very and that'll be good that y'all are taking a good route to make sure the fans all have an even basis. So obviously when joining the game as a new player and there's people who might have been playing it for a while, they might have some other uh, parts that you won't have access to. Mm -hmm. Is there what, How is that going to be balanced for the new players? Sure. 
All right, so there are probably two things. Uh, our matchmaking, first of all, will try and matchmake you so that you're not playing against people that are significantly more experienced than you. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the starter kit is actually a very good, versatile set of weapon parts. So with the starter kit, you'll be able to take on anyone one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. You probably won't be able to do some of the more bizarre strategies, but you'll definitely be able to do, like, you'll be able to play any basic strategy very competently with the starter kit. So when I was playing the game just now, one of the things that uh, I was told is, like, and also I was able to see that a lot of it is uh, platforming, like within the maps, there's a lot yeah. of the, like one of the things that like he showed, like one of the guys was showing me is you can run upstairs and use that to gain momentum to get a higher jump onto, yep. like, for example, the map we were playing, mm -hmm. onto the bridge, which can be very hectic at times, especially when the capture point's on there. Yeah. Is that one of the things that you're really focused for to make it a very versatile uh, shooter? Yeah, uh, again, platforming was something that we definitely intended to focus on with our shooting because we wanted to make something that you, I don't want to say don't see very often, but it's kind of a shout out or love letter to old school shooter fans. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's why the game moves the way that it does. So right now you are showing off the, uh, what, what do you call it? It's like a capture, like a fly capture kind of mode. What's yeah. it called? Yeah, Control Point Rush is the, Control Point Rush. the standing name right now. Are there going to be, what other kind of modes are y'all going to include within the final uh, release? So here we're also showing Death Snatch, which okay. is very similar to the Kill Confirmed game type you see in other games. Okay. Uh, we also have, this is also not named right now, Red Rover, which uh, we haven't shown yet, but we'll probably show later today. Uh, we also have a variant on Capture the Flag. We're probably going to keep those four for the beginning because we don't want to overwhelm the player with mm -hmm. more game types, but I will tell you we have a lot more game types that we play at home and we'll just release them a little bit at a time so as not to overwhelm players. For people who are interested in getting involved in the closed beta and eventually, I guess, the open beta, what uh -huh. would be the best way to try to get involved? Uh, that should be on loadout.com. You can also like us on Facebook or Twitter to get the most recent update. All right, that sounds great. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to mention before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think we're good. Uh, thanks for uh, checking this out, and we look forward to seeing everybody online. All right, thank you.